Um, and so welcome everyone. My name is Tiffany Rubalcaba. I am a program coordinator here um, at UCI's Division of Continuing Education. Um, I specifically oversee the data analytics certificate program, um, which is what you're all here for. So welcome. Um, today's session, we will um, be exploring um, prescriptive analytics, which is a type of analytics. Um, it is a course that we offer in the certificate program. So um, you'll be hearing um, from me about the program um, and from one of our instructors today. So welcome. Okay, as you all heard, the session is being recorded. Um, if for some reason you have to hop off early um, or you want to review it later, it will be posted on our website. Um, that way you can kind of catch there and go ahead and rewatch it later. Okay, so a quick um, outline of what we'll be doing today. Um, as I mentioned, I am going to go through um, a quick overview of the Division of Continuing Education um, and our technology programs. Um, I will give you a little bit of information about our data analytics for business certificate program, um, the things that you'll learn in the program, how many courses are in the program, and so on. Um, and then I will turn it over to um, one of our wonderful instructors, Mr. Uh, Durson Delen. I'll go through an introduction for him, um, and then he will go through um, a short demo of what to expect in that prescriptive analytics course. He is the one that teaches the course, um, so you all get to get a quick glimpse of what it's like to take that course with him. Um, and then after that, we will go through the different courses that we are offering this spring quarter. And then we'll end um, with a Q&A session. Um, so if you have questions throughout um, the presentation, you can type them into that Q&A, you can type them into the chat, um, and we'll get to them at the end. Okay, perfect. So we will just jump right in. Um, so what is UCI's Division of Continuing Education? Um, so we offer courses both on campus and online. Um, specifically, the data analytics program is offered fully online, so you don't ever have to come onto the campus to take those courses. And we offer courses in STEM, pre-med, humanities, um, businesses, social sciences, um, and everything that you, you can think of. Um, we welcome our population is very diverse. We welcome students um, and professionals from all around the world. We have individuals who are just graduating high school who are just graduating college and they're kind of looking for that next step. We have individuals who are very well onto their careers and they're just really looking to enhance the skills and knowledge um, that they already have. Um, so a diverse um, population here at uh, DCE. And if you would like to learn more about um, who we are, about the courses, about the certificate programs that we offer, you can visit our website at ce.uci.edu. Um, and after this presentation, um, you will all also get an email from me. I mean, I will include the slide deck that you're all seeing today. That way you can click on any of the links that you see throughout the presentation. Okay, so who we are, um, specifically here at Technology Programs. So as I mentioned, I am one of the program coordinators. Um, I also work alongside Amy Kim, who is um, one of our other wonderful program coordinators. Um, and then we both work with our assistant director, Julie Pei. Um, and then I have listed our contact information here, um, personal email, and also phone numbers if you need to reach us for anything. Um, and I've also included our um, department email address there. So if you have any questions after this presentation, um, feel free to email me individually, and you can CC that departmental contact and, um, email on there, um, and any of us will be happy to get back to you. Okay, so on to what you're all here for. Um, so a little bit about um, the data analytics certificate program. Um, so throughout this program, basically students will be getting um, a better understanding of what organizational data is and business processes um, and how you can explore all of that to better drive your results for your organization. Um, so throughout the program, students are learning the fundamental concepts behind collecting, storing, and analyzing data. And they're doing this through um, like the main types of analytics that there are. So that includes descriptive analytics, diagnostic analytics, predictive and prescriptive analytics. Um, and we have um, courses in those different types of analytics. So you'll get to um, explore a little bit more into details um, in those specific individual courses about those types of analytics. Um, so yes, 
welcome. And then we, on the right here, I have listed our course schedule. And um, so in the program, we have a total of five required courses. Um, so we have an intro course, as I mentioned, a more detailed advanced course for the um, types of analytics. And then we end with a data retrieval prep and management course, which is all about um, how to go about finding your data and cleaning it up um, before going ahead and using it um, and applying the different analytics methods that you'll learn throughout the other courses. Um, and then you're also required to take a minimum of 1.5 units in an elective course. Um, so we have a ton of electives listed here um, and you kind of have the freedom to decide which one it is that you want to take as part of the program. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, so now I will um, go ahead and introduce um, one of our industry experts and one of our instructors. Um, so Dr. Justin Delenn here is one of our instructors. Um, he has over 30 years of experience um, in the field of analytics and data science. Um, so, <laughs> and then um, he, not only is he an instructor, um, but he also has this unique experience and knowledge that he shares with students because he has the experience of working in the industry um, as a business consultant. And he's also a professor and he goes about teaching this every single day. Um, so we are very glad to have him here. Um, and as I mentioned, he'll be going through um, just a short demo of what to expect in the course, what pres um, prescriptive analytics is. Um, so without further ado, Durson, I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you for the nice introduction. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and go through, as Tiffany said, a few slides without boring you too much with the presentation uh, details. So I'm gonna talk about the prescriptive analytics, but um, what I wanna spend on uh, you know, a few minutes is to introduce myself as to how I relate to prescriptive analytics specifically in business analytics in general, and I'll tell you a little bit about what you would expect from this course. So as uh, Tiffany said, I have uh, 30 plus years of experience in analytics. Now, now you might say 30 years ago, we did not have analytics. We had other things, but not analytics. But uh, what we did and for what reason we did it was exactly why we're doing analytics nowadays. So my first um, professional analytics engagement dates all the way back to mid 1980s, uh, 1987 to be specific, when I actually developed smart pricing algorithms, decision support systems for a maritime company. I developed a system on IBM mainframe computers written COBOL language. So since then, um, mid to late 1980s, I've been in analytics in AI, machine learning, um, although we called it expert system back then, and operations research and, and optimization simulation world. My education is all in optimization simulation world, but uh, my professional experience uh, kind of mixes this decision technologies ranging from AI machine learning expert systems to optimization simulation linear programming to computer programming and, and making things available. I uh, have been fortunate enough to have uh, published 11 books, textbooks in the field of analytics from text mining to prescriptive analytics to predictive analytics. And I have authored, you know, more than 150 peer reviewed articles and presentations. I'm also editing quite a few uh, journals in the field of analytics. Um, I'm not just a regular academic, although my full-time engagement is a, a, a professor, a regents professor at Oklahoma State, and I actually teach uh, courses at UCI, but also I do consultancy, I do public speech, I do pre bono uh, voluntary analytic solutions to um, socially sensitive um, application areas. So as you already know, analytics is a complicating field because there's so many names, so many terminologies, so many uh, different contexts within analytics is kind of getting lost. You know, are they the same? Are they different? Are they progression of the, the same continuum? We hear business intelligence, which has been around for quite a long time. And then we, in the last decade or so, 
start hearing more and more business analytics as opposed to business intelligence. And then we see that kind of interchangeably um, labeled as data science. We, we hear a lot of uh, buzz, a lot of interest in AI, in machine learning, in big data, in internet of things, the robotics, you know, automated decisioning, text mining, natural language processing, how they kind of sort those uh, term confusion out to understand what is what and what is not. Now to me, and this is how we cover it in our, our textbooks is that it starts with the business intelligence. It's the descriptive side of analytics continuum. Then it progressed into business analytics when we added more predictive analytics in, in, in maybe a little bit of prescriptive analytics, you know, optimization, simulation, multi-criteria decision-making. And then when it becomes a little more programming oriented, the Python flavor, the algorithmic extent of it, we oftentimes call it data science. Usually you hear data science in most, you know, engineering and statistics and computer science departments, the graduate programs labeled as data science, whereas if you see it coming out of business schools, you usually see the label of data analytics or business analytics, <clears throat> but they're almost interchangeably used both in academia and in industry. And those IoT, the big data, the machine learning and NLP, they're all <clears throat> enabling technologies and in, in disciplines for these um, hugely popular and, and highly promising uh, technology continuum from intelligence to analytics to, to science, if you will. And most of what I cover in this course comes from some of my uh, some of the books that, that I either authored or co-authored, specifically the, the book that's, uh, you know, convenient label that is Prescriptive Analytics published in 2020 by um, Financial Times Press, which is now owned by Pearson Pub Publisher. So at the end, what we're trying to do in analytics and data science is to tap into probably one of the most valuable assets of the organization and we're referring to data. Now the data used to be structured data, data that we captured as we conduct our business and stored in our uh, relational databases, either our ERP system, let it be SAP, Oracle, or the others, our POS point of sale system, our uh, supply chain management system, our customer relationship management systems, right? But recently in the last decade, maybe a little longer than that. In addition to the structured data that comes from our databases, we also tap into internet-based data sources. We're talking about <clears throat> social analytics, social media. We're talking about um, content created by people, thanks to Web 2.0 and Web 3.0 enabling technologies behind it. And recently we're observing that the data is being generated by machines communicating with other machines, the sensors, the, um, um, the data capture mechanisms are generating tremendous amount of uh, data that we label nowadays IoT data. And all three streams of data, we call it big data. And we need to tap into this, this valuable sources of data, the evidence uh, to turn it information and then to turn it into um, actionable insight that we often call knowledge. And we, if we keep doing this to identify problems, to analyze problems, to solve problems, to identify opportunities and take advantage of the opportunities before anybody else, before our competitors do, we're actually practicing the very core of analytics continuum, which is kind of leading into wisdom, right? Um, very efficiently, very optimally managing business processes. Regardless of what you call it, business intelligence, business analytics, data science, the underlying phenomena is to use data to turn it into information, information into knowledge, and act on it to make optimal, timely decisions. And in this course specifically in prescriptive analytics, we follow the human decision-making process, right? Either we know it or not explicitly or implicitly, we go through these four stages before we humans make decisions. The first is that once the real world expose an opportunity or um, presents a problem to us, the first stage that we go through is called intelligence. 
we try to understand what's the underlying causes or what's the structure problem um, that, that we can, we can, we can kind of formulate from the, the symptoms that we observe. And then this intelligence phase is, is where we collect information, we standardize, we understand the underlying structure problem and we come up with you know, a, a game plan as to how to attack the problem or how to take advantage of the opportunity. Then in the design phase, we generate alternatives. We take into account all the criteria that we need to uh, consider. And then we generate a whole bunch of alternatives. Every single one of them are potentially a feasible solution. And then in the choice phase, we sort it out and we figure out what is the best out of all those feasible solutions, what is the best, the most optimal solution that we can act on to make the best out of the given situation, right? And then once we verify through sensitivity analysis, through validation verification, then we implement it and change how we do what we do in the real world, right? In our company, in our personal life, because most everything that we learn in this class, you can apply to your personal life as well as you can apply to your professional life in your, uh, your company. And the theoretical foundation of this uh, process dates all the way back to the 1970s, proposed by Simon. Um, and then it's still being highly um, popularized and, and, and followed in the, the analytics community. Now, speaking of different terminologies that collectively define analytics and data science, if you look at it historically, and this is how we kind of mapped it out in a longitudinal, you know, time varying fashion. If you go all the way back to 1970s, what we nowadays call data science, business analytics, we used to call it decision support systems, where we used a little bit of AI and expert systems, mostly rule-based expert systems. And we use data to generate routine periodic reports, weekly, monthly, so that we can look to see what happened in the previous period and then learn from it and then maybe do better in the next period. 1980s, we integrated information collect in different parts of the organization. So it kind of led to this integrated information infrastructure. Nowadays, what we call ERP or SAP or Oracle systems, where this integrated data is the single version of the truth as to what the organization does and what they have done in an integrated fashion. So once you have this integrated view of data, then you can do on-demand, uh, again, static reporting. In 1990s, we see that this reporting turned into dashboards, the scorecards, thanks to data warehousing technology where the data is collected, organized in a way that it actually supports decision-making explicitly. So data warehouse is a relational database <clears throat> designed specifically to support decision-making activities in a given organization, okay? Other than that, it still sits on maybe DB2 or SQL Server or Oracle, but the purpose of which it's created makes it different than transactional databases. It's created for the purpose of supporting decision-making. In 2000s, maybe 10, 15, 20 years, the name changed to business intelligence. Again, we integrated in addition to this data visualization, dashboards and scorecards and kind of all fueled and enabled with the data warehousing. We also added data mining, text mining, some cloud computing, some software as a service architectures. In 2010 and beyond, we see the name changing to business analytics and big data because we also added new uh, data types. Uh, the volume, the variety, the velocity of the data changed dramatically that made it a different type of data to deal with. Thanks again, internet, social media, uh, social analytics. And then new technologies are developed in order to handle this gigantic, this huge amounts of multifaceted, multi-structured data in memory processing, in database processing, this cloud computing made a significant impact analyzing and converting into insight, this, this gigantic data warehouses. 2020 and beyond, although we don't know what we're expecting to make a significant impact is the decision automation. How can we um, have the machines, computers in a smart, intelligent way 
make the routine decisions automatically without having human involvement. So the data capture is going to be automated. The model development will be automated to some extent and model deployment and acting on the opportunities and problems will also be automated. So the, the next five to 10 years, we're going to see a lot of automation. A good example of that is the self-driving cars, right? Wholly automated. It's collecting the data, running the algorithms, going against its own knowledge base, and then acting on the surrounding uh, and making things happen without a human involvement. So we'll see a lot of automation driven, again, mostly from um, three different layers of analytics, the descriptive, the predictive, and the prescriptive. Now, speaking of the simple taxonomy of analytics, you might actually see this uh, pretty much any and every uh, analytics related uh, business, uh, magazines, the journals, to be able to understand what business analytics is. You can actually place that as a data science. It's the same thing uh, in, in large extent. There are three consecutive layers. We call it echelons in business analytics. The first one is descriptive where uh, data visualization, business reporting, dashboard scorecards kind of dominates the enabling technologies. The questions that you answer in descriptive are the, the what happened and what is happening type of uh, backward oriented decisions. At the end, what you're doing in descriptive is to define and identify and solidify root causes, the real problems that are worthy of additional analytics studies. The next tier, Next echelon is predictive. Now that you know what happened, you want to know what will happen, what is most likely to happen. And then there we use data mining, text mining, machine learning, web, and multimedia mining and forecasting. An idea here is to accurately project and estimate what the future actually holds. The top tier in the continuum is the prescriptive analytics. Now, prescriptive analytics works in a following way. Now that we know what happened, thanks to descriptive analytics, now that we have a good idea as to what might happen, what is most likely to happen, we want to put those two together to figure out what can I do? What is the best course of action that I can take? What is the most optimal decision that I can put in action? And that, those are the things that we do in prescriptive analytics. And that's where we use optimization simulation multi criteria decision-making methods, some meta-heuristic methods, okay? And then the outcome of prescriptive analytics is the best possible decision for a given situation. Situation could be solving a problem. Situation could be taking advantage of a opportunity that just presented itself. The business intelligence uh, is basically um, labeled uh, for descriptive analytics and then uh, predictive and prescriptive collectively nowadays, we still call it advanced analytics. This is another way to look at it in a progressive fashion, which parts of this analytics continuum is retrospective, looking backward, understanding what happened, and what, are, what parts of the analytics continuum is prospective, looking into the future, understanding what might happen, and then making decision to change what will happen in the future. As you can see at the bottom of this continuum, the um, outcomes of descriptive diagnostic combined together and predictive feeds into prescriptive analytics to find what should I do? What is the best? What's the most optimal decision that I can actually make? As you move from left to right on the x-axis, your computational sophistication is increasing. As you move from bottom to top on the y-axis, your value proposition the added value to your analytics projects is also increasing. Now let's talk about the course, what we're gonna cover in this course, okay? In this course, we're gonna look at analytics in general, the motivation behind analytics, what are the reasons for huge popularity of analytics in data science? And then we're gonna um, define prescriptive analytics as a top echelon, the, 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 the last stop, if you will, on the analytics continuum, where the actual, the optimal decisions are made. We'll look at digital decision-making process and we're, go we're gonna analyze it from the prescriptive analytics perspective. Then we're gonna dive into optimization modeling. Basically, we're gonna look at linear programming, non-linear programming, and we're gonna do that in a very intuitive, visual fashion. 
meaning that it's not going to be uh, mathematical derivations, the theorems and proofs and, and so forth. This is more problem-oriented, application-focused approach to optimization. It will be much different than what you might have experienced if you have taken any linear programming courses in the past. So we're going to use Excel as our main uh, software environment to do optimization using linear and nonlinear programming. Then we're going to look at heuristic decision modeling. Now, heuristic means a common sense, a logical, a in the absence of optimization, the best way to go about solving a problem. That's what heuristic means. Well, it turns out in real world, not every problem can be solved optimally using optimization and linear programming. And the ones that cannot be solved complex enough, we solve them in ease and in a straightforward fashion using heuristic decision modeling techniques. And here we're gonna visit and exemplify using again Excel, one of the most popular heuristic decision modeling technique called genetic algorithms, which kind of resembles to the process of evolution, kind of mathematically represented in a search space to find better and better solutions for a given um, problem situation. Then we're gonna look at simulation modeling. How can we take the real world and represent it in a computer and conduct what if analysis against it. Within simulation modeling, we're gonna look at a little bit of the Monte, Monte Carlo simulation, static stochastic modeling of financial to a production to service type of a problem domain. And we'll also look at a little more sophisticated, a little more realistic in, uh, simulation extent called process simulation. So there we might do a little bit of uh, exercise in Excel, but I'll also show you some tools that I have at my disposal for process simulation. You'll see that they look like these video games, but they're not to play games, but they're to play what if analysis for a given business process, either manufacturing or service or anything that you can think of so that you can conduct experiments on the computer model of the reality. And then whatever works, you can apply it to the real world equivalent of it. And we'll also look at multi-criteria decision modeling. It turns out, again, real world is too complex. It's not one criterion or one object that, that you have to deal with when the problems presents themselves. We oversimplified humans because we cannot deal with a lot of um, criteria and a lot of objectives at the same time. So we intuitively oversimplify situations so we can deal with decision situations. But in real world, especially in business, we need to use some um, methods that helps us um, dissect the problem into smaller pieces. And then in a more uh, logical, optimal fashion, uh, sort it out and find the best possible uh, outcome for it. So we're going to use maybe when you're buying a house, what are the criteria that you should be considering? How do you sort things out to find the best possible house in this multi-criteria, multi-objective space? when you are choosing which graduate program or university to attend to, that's a multi-criteria situation that you need to make a smart decision because you don't want to regret once you make that decision. And in order to minimize the likelihood of regret, you need to make the most optimal decision upfront before you actually put it in action. And those are the things that we're going to cover in multi-criteria decision modeling. Basically, we're going to have this full coverage of prescriptive analytics a to Z, at the very high level, very managerial, very motivational level, that if needed down the road, you can dig into any of those dimension and learn more about it with additional courses if you choose to do so. But you will have good, broad understanding and some hands-on exercises as to how to do uh, the components of this prescriptive analytics course. We're gonna talk about how machines are getting smarter and smarter. Uh, for the tasks that are traditionally known to be only for humans because they require creativity, intelligence. Well, it turns out computers are closing the gap and in quite a few instances, they are actually doing better than, than humans. So one good example is IBM Watson competing on Jeopardy against the best two um, um, competitors from historical perspective. One most money winner, the other one most consecutive winner. 
And then as you can see, the numbers on the right hand side. And if you have never watched it, go to YouTube and watch a few 10 minutes parts of this Watson versus, you know, um, these two best in jeopardy on a competition level. And you will see how much we have um, advanced in computational sciences that a computer on a very unstructured uh, setting like Jeopardy, the, the, the game of Jeopardy, uh, can compete and beat the best of the best in men. In summary, business analytics is all about timely and optimal decision making. So analytics equal to decision making, either and mostly in business settings, but also in your you know, personal settings. It relies on data, evidence, and experiences, and computational mathematical statistical sciences. So putting the data and the science together, data science, it helps you make optimal, faster, better decisions. Prescriptive analytics is the highest level of the business analytics data science continuum, the three echelons. While predict descriptive analytics and predictive analytics provide the necessary information, the alternatives, the choices, prescriptive analytics is where we sort it out and find the best possible decision for a given situation. So that's why this prescriptive analytics course is hugely important. It's a echelon that has been not receiving the attention and interest that it should have received in the analytics um, community because it's not as easy to probably craft and teach as the descriptive, the data visualization or predictive, you know, forecasting. But we did pull together an exceptionally good curriculum under this course in eight weeks that we covered prescriptive analytics from managerial, from very practical, very pragmatic standpoint. Now that's my short introduction to me and to the course. And if we have time, I can entertain a few questions, uh, Tiffany. If don't, uh, if we don't have time, then you have my email address, both UCI email address and my Oklahoma State email address. Just shoot me an email with any question that you might have, and I'll respond to it as soon as I possibly can. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Jerson. Um, so as Jerson mentioned, if you all, um, before I continue with my presentation, um, I'll kind of pause here um, to see if any of you have any questions about um, specifically the prescriptive analytics course, maybe the prescriptive process like in the analytics cycle. Um, I, whenever we host these webinars, I like to mention um, I work here, so I am at your disposal anytime. You can contact me if you have any questions about courses, course start dates, any of that information. Um, but it's not every day that you have an expert in front of you. And so I encourage you all to take advantage of that if you have questions um, about just the world of analytics in general. Um, I encourage you to ask them now. Um, so I'll just give a few seconds, you know, for individuals to gather their thoughts. Um, you can use the Q&A feature. Um, you can type them in the chat. Thank you, Derson. He went ahead and shared his email address there with everyone. Um, if you think of anything, you can email me or you can email Derson, um, and we will both happily get back to you. Um, while I... Oh, perfect. Thank you. We do have one question. Um, yes. Do we need computer programming knowledge to join the course? Uh, the answer is no, there is no computer programming in this course. The software that we're going to use Excel, um, basic Excel knowledge is going to enhance your uh, learning experience. You will enjoy it more, uh, but there is no programming at all. Correct, yes. And in addition to Excel, there will be other show and tell demonstration type of software that I want you to be aware of in the prescriptive analysis continuum, but probably 80% of the hands-on stuff that we're going to do, we're going to do it in Excel. Yes, thank you. And that is the case with the other courses in the program as well. Um, the data analytics program is a lot more focused on business solutions and, you know, addressing business problems. Um, and so it's less technical. If you're looking for a more technical program that does include some of that like programming language, and we do have a data science program available as well. Um, and so that caters to those individuals who want to get a little bit more technical and who want to kind of gain some of those programming skills. Um, so if you have questions about that program, Dresden also teaches in that one. <laughs> um, so if you have questions about that one, um, you can send me an email and I am more than happy to share some of that information with you. But thank you, that is a great question. 
Um, if anyone else has any questions, you can go ahead and type them um, in the chat. I will go ahead and share my screen. Okay, perfect. Can you all see my screen okay? I yes. hope so. <laughs> oh, perfect. Thank you, Jason. Okay, um, so now that you heard um, a little bit about Jason and that prescriptive analytics for us and the prescriptive process of the analytic cycle, um, now I'll go through our spring course offerings. Um, so our spring quarter starts March 28th. Um, the first course in the program um, starts April 4th. Um, and so we are on a quarter system. And so the quarter is 12 weeks long, but our courses are eight weeks long. So they'll run anywhere. Um, they'll run, you know, the eight weeks in between those 12 weeks. Um, so we'll, here we're starting with the introduction to analyzing data course. And so this is the very first course in the program. Um, it is a very like introductory level course um, where students will get an introduction to um, the fundamentals of collecting, storing, and analyzing data. Um, and after you do that, you will go through like a brief introduction to the different types of analytics. And so that includes descriptive, diagnostic, um, predictive, and prescriptive. Um, and you'll kind of get a little bit of information on how each type of analytics is used, um, how you, know, you can make decisions off of them and different actions from them. Um, and so this first course starts April 4th and ends May 29th. Um, this is something that we're just piloting this quarter for spring. Um, so if we do have any individuals joining us who are new students who have never taken courses with us before, and um, we do have a discount available to you. Um, when you get my email, I will include the slide deck, but I will also include that discount code. Um, so again, if you're a brand new student who has never taken classes with UCI DCE, um, then now's your chance to take a course with us and do it at a discounted price. Um, so again, this is that first course in the program, the intro course, and that one will run April 4th through May 29th. Okay, the second course being offered this summer is the predictive analytics course. Um, and so Durson also touched on that a little bit. Um, that predictive course is all about what will happen. You know, like we've looked at the data already. Um, what do we predict is going to happen? Why do we predict it's going to happen? So it's all about making those projections. Um, and so you'll learn all of that um, using different tools in the course. Um, and so that course is also scheduled to run April 4th through May 29th. There is a prerequisite for this course, um, for all of the courses in the program after the intro course. And that prerequisite is that introduction course. Um, if you already have some knowledge in the world of data analysis, if you're already doing the work, um, then you can go ahead and email me and we can potentially talk about you taking a different course. Um, if you kind of have surpassed that like introductory level course, we don't want you um, to have to take that and sit through that if you already know the information, if you're already doing the work. Um, so if that is the case, then you can feel free to send me an email and we can go ahead and um, discuss that. But so this is the second course being offered this spring. Um, and then that last course being offered this spring is Durston's course for prescriptive analytics. Um, so again, <laughs> it's all about, you know, looking at like now that we've seen the history of the data, now that we've seen our projections for it, like what actions are we going to take in order, you know, for our business to succeed in order for us to make a change, um, to optimize, you know, those business goals. Um, and again, because this is one of those advanced courses where you go specifically into this type of analytics, and um, the prerequisite for this is that intro course. Um, and so this, so for those of you who have already started in the program um, and you're kind of looking for the next course to take, this would be one of them. And this one um, starts April 18th and goes through June 12th. Okay, so I, I will quickly pause here for any questions um, about the courses being offered this spring. You can put them in the Q&A, you can chat, whatever is easiest for you. Okay, while you all think of your questions, I'll quickly just go through um, some very common, um, important like questions that we get asked. Um, so one of them being, how do you get started? How do you go about taking a course with us? Um, and everything is done online. You will simply go to our website, ce.uci.edu. Um, you will go into the technology tab and you will click on data analytics for business program. Um, and so once you go to that page, you'll see the grid of the different courses being offered each quarter. Um, and you will click on that green enroll button. Let me back up here. 
So it'll look like this right next to that spring date. It'll show a green enroll button. Um, you'll click it, you'll get taken to a page with course details. So it'll give you information about that specific course, the course dates, the course fees. It'll give um, information on your instructor. So short bio on who your instructor is. Um, and then you'll kind of go through an online process, a registration process. Um, and that's fairly, very easy, very quick. Um, so you can just do that online. Um, and for those of you who are interested in the certificate program, once you have completed two to three courses in the program, um, then you would want to declare candidacy. Um, and what that means declaring candidacy is you're letting us know that you want to work towards the certificate program and you're not just taking um, these individual courses. Um, so if by all means you wanted to, if you were an individual who perhaps is already doing um, like visualization and descriptive analytics work and you just want a little bit more knowledge on descriptive analytics or prescriptive analytics, you can just enroll into those two courses. You don't have to take the entire program. Um, but for those of you who are interested in taking the entire program and receiving that certificate at the end, then you would go ahead and declare candidacy um, to let us know that that is your goal you are working towards receiving that certificate. Okay. And so that kind of answers that last question of, can I take courses without completing the program? Yes, you can. <laughs> okay, so now I will leave some time um, for questions. This can be questions about um, the courses being offered in spring, the data analytics program itself, um, questions for Durson um, about the field of data analytics, about the field of data science. He works <laughs> in both, so he is a very big expert on that. Um, so I will leave some time for questions. And if you don't have any questions, that's completely okay. Um, we, you know, you can email us if you have any questions. Thurston went ahead um, and left his email in the chat and I will do so as well. Okay. And again, I, you all will get um, an email with the recording and with the slide deck, as well as, you know, if you are a new student, um, I will include that discount code. That way you can enroll into that course um, in the spring. Okay, yeah, so Greg has a question here about um, the data science um, program. So yes, yeah, so as I mentioned, we do have a data science program, which is a little bit more technical, um, different from our business analytics program. Um, I am happy to um, share, if you want to send me an email, I went ahead and like left my email address there, um, and I can go ahead and share a little bit more information with you on that. Um, Justin, I don't know if maybe you want to discuss perhaps like some differences in both programs since you you are familiar with both? Um, as you said, uh, Tiffany, uh, this program is more application oriented, more business focused, more problem solving oriented. Data science is a little more programming. So you're gonna do a lot of uh, Python program, you're gonna learn Python and you're gonna do a lot of Python in addition to some of the other tools, other program languages, but the core language that you're gonna be um learning in actually it helps if you know a little bit of it before you get started python language uh they do overlap quite a bit because it's all analytics like it's all how can we convert data into actionable insight um both you know uh, sort of programs has the same um end goal in mind one is more technical the other one is more business oriented Yes, perfect. Thank you, Derson. Um, and yeah, as Derson mentioned, it is, um, folk, we do focus on Python, but like the data analytics program, you do have elective courses that you can choose from. And so if you're looking to go into like a different programming, we do offer courses um, in R and a few other um, courses. Um, so if you are interested in that program, um, you can visit our website, ce.uci.edu. Um, and in the drop down under the different programs offered through the technology department, you will see both the data science and the data analytics program listed there. And you can um, click between the two and see if you're interested. Yeah, so that is a great question. And um, we have um, a request here um, for uh, Durson to talk a little bit about career paths um, and career options using prescriptive analytics. Um, career path. Um, awesome. <laughs> there, there's so much 
uh, jobs are so many. You already know that because you're you're, you're patching into this. You, you heard the buzz. Um, you can actually judge it from how many new programs are being offered from different universities, not just in the U.S., all around the world. I actually do consult some of the education institutions to craft their own curriculum, their own certificate programs, or even master's or undergraduate programs. So, so the, the potential is almost unlimited. So, so the, the, um, as the saying goes, the, 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 the pie is getting larger, uh, pie in the sense of uh, uh, potential job opportunities in the field of data, data science and business analytics. Um, you don't have to be a data scientist. Now people are kind of backing out of that title, data science, because data scientist is not a single person, it's a team of people. Um, some people are going to be more programming focused, you know, data wranglers. Some are going to be more business focused, you know, business analyst, understanding the problem in business setting that uh, is worthy of data science analytics kind of study. And then some people in the middle, project management and, you know, data science analytics professionals that kind of uh, merge the two together, the business side and technical side to create um, human-friendly, decision-maker-friendly um, platforms. So the career path is tremendous. I don't think there is any other profession, um, especially in business and in, in you know, technical sense out there uh, that can compete with data science and business analytics. We have our own master's program at Oklahoma State. Um, Every single student that we graduate finds a job, um, very, very good job. Most of them actually signs before they actually graduate. And I hear similar stories from, you know, a lot of the good schools around the nation and UCI definitely is one of those best schools uh, in the nation that uh, is very technical, very thorough and continuing education programs are just unmatched with, with any other school. I haven't seen it anywhere else. The rigor of it, the, the, the professionalism of it, and the delivery, you know, um, convenient delivery mechanisms that they put in place so that people from uh, different uh, personal and social and professional settings can actually uh, pursue and, and, and achieve those, those certificates. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Dresden. <laughs> Said it better than I could. <laughs> um, perfect. Okay. If are there any other questions um, for myself or Dresden about the world of um, business analytics, about um, our programs, our courses? I just give it a few more seconds here. Okay, I don't think so. <laughs> um, so with that, I do want to thank all of you for joining us. Um, and thank you, Derson, um, for being here um, with us to talk about the program and about um, the industry that you work in. Um, I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you. Um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free um, to send me um, an email, to send our general inbox an email, um, and I am happy um, to answer any questions. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you. Bye, everyone.